صحيح البخاري The Book of الوضوء Ablution Chapter 1 What has been revealed regarding ablution and the statement of Allah Almighty إذا قمتم إلى الصلاة فاغسلوا وجوهكم وأيديكم إلى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم وأرجلكم إلى الكعبة Oh you who believe When you intend to offer salah, prayer, wash your faces and your hands, forearms, up to the elbows, rub by passing with hands over your heads, and wash your feet up to the ankles. Quran chapter 5, verse 6. Abu Abdullah says, The Prophet, peace be upon him, had made it clear that it is obligatory, while performing ablution, to wash the above-mentioned body parts once. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, also did perform the ablution by washing these parts twice and thrice, but he never washed them more than three times. And the religious learned men dislike exceeding the limits set by the Prophet, peace be upon him, while performing ablution, and to surpass the action of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Chapter 1 No salah, prayer, is accepted without ablution, i.e., to remove the small hadith by ablution or the big hadith by taking a bath. Footnote The small hadith means passing wind or urine or answering the call of nature. Narrated Aba Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, says, The salah, prayer of a person who does al hadith, passes urine, stool, or wind is not accepted till he performs, repeats, the ablution. A person from Hadramaut asked Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, what is al-hadath? Abu Hurairah replied, al-hadath means the passing of wind from the anus. Chapter 1 The superiority of ablution and al-ghurru al muhajjal the parts of the body of the Muslims washed in ablution will shine on the day of resurrection and the angels will call them by that name from the traces of ablution. Narrated Nu'aym al-Mujmer Once I went up the roof of the mosque along with Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. He performed ablution and said, I heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, On the day of resurrection, my followers will be called al ghurri al-Muhajjalin from the traces of ablution, and whoever can increase the area of his radiance should do so, i.e., by performing ablution in the most perfect manner. Footnote. Regarding that statement, on the day of resurrection, my followers will be called al ghurri al-Muhajjalin from the traces of ablution, and whoever can increase the area of his radiance. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did not increase the area more than what is washed of the body parts while doing ablution, as Allah ordered to be washed in the Qur'an. Chapter 1 One should not repeat ablution, if in doubt, unless and until he is convinced that he has lost his ablution by having hadath. Narrated Abad ibn Tamim, may Allah be pleased with him. My uncle asked Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, about a person who imagined to have passed wind during salah, prayer. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, replied, he should not leave his salah unless he hears sound or smells something. Chapter 1 To perform a light ablution. Narrated Quray, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them, says, The Prophet, peace be upon him, slept till he snored, and then offered salah, prayer, or probably lay till his breath sounds were heard, and then got up and prayed. Ibn Abbas added, I stayed overnight in the house of my aunt, Maymuna. The Prophet, peace be upon him, slept for a part of the night. And late in the night, he got up and performed ablution from a hanging water skin, a light, perfect ablution, and stood up for salah. I too performed a similar ablution, then I went and stood on his left. He drew me to his right, and prayed as much as Allah wished, and again lay and slept, till his breath sounds were heard. Later on, the Mu'adhin, 
called Maker for the Salah, came to him and informed him that it was time for Salah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, went with him for the Salah without performing a new ablution. Sufyan said to Amr that some people said, The eyes of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, sleep, but his heart does not sleep. Amr replied, I heard Ubaid ibn Umayr saying that the dreams of prophets were divine revelation. And then he recited the verse, Inni ara fil manami anni adbahu. Oh my son, I have seen in a dream that I am slaughtering you. Offer you in sacrifice to Allah. Quran chapter 37, verse 102. See Fath al Bari, volume 1, page number 249. See Hadith number 183. Chapter 1 The completion or perfection of ablution. One should wash all the parts perfectly. And Ibn Umar said, The completion of ablution means to clean the parts perfectly. Narrated Usama ibn Zayd. May Allah be pleased with both of them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, proceeded from Arafat till when he reached the mountain path, he dismounted, urinated, and then performed ablution, but not a perfect one. I said to him, Is it the time for Salah, prayer, O Allah's Messenger? He said, The place of Salah is ahead of you. He wrote till when he reached al Muzdalifa, he dismounted and performed ablution, a perfect one. The call for Adhan and Iqama was pronounced, and he, peace be upon him, led the Maghrib prayer. Then everybody made their camels kneel down at its place. Then the Iqama was pronounced for the Isha prayer, which the Prophet, peace be upon him, led, and no optional nawafil or sunnah, etc. prayer was offered in between the two salah, Isha and Maghrib. Chapter 1 to wash the face with both hands by a handful of water. Narrated Ata ibn Yasar, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them, performed ablution and washed his face in the following way. He ladled out a handful of water, rinsed his mouth and washed his nose with it by putting in water and then blowing it out. He then took another handful of water and did like this, just drink, joining both hands, and washed his face, took another handful of water, and washed his right forearm. He again took another handful of water, and washed his left forearm, and passed with hands over his head, and took another handful of water, and poured it over his right foot, up to his ankles, and washed it thoroughly, and similarly took another handful of water, and washed thoroughly his left foot, up to the ankles, and said, I saw Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, performing ablution in this way. Chapter 1 to recite in the name of Allah during every action and on having sexual relations with one's wife. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, If any one of you on having sexual relations with his wife says, and he must say it before starting, in the name of Allah. O oh Allah, protect us from Satan, and also protect what you bestow upon us, i.e., the coming offspring from Satan. And if it's distant that they should have a child then, Satan will never be able to harm that offspring. Chapter 1 What to say while going to the lavatory, water closet. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. Whenever the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to answer the call of nature, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabat. I.e., O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from devils, males and females, or all offensive and wicked things, evil deeds, etc. Chapter 1 Providing water at lavatory for washing the private parts after answering the call of nature. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them. 
Once the Prophet, peace be upon him, entered the lavatory and I placed water for his ablution. He asked, who placed it? He was informed accordingly, and so he said, O oh Allah, make him Ibn Abbas, a learned scholar in religion. Isna. Chapter 1 While urinating or defecating, never face the Qibla, except when you are screened by a building or a wall or something like that. Narrated Aba Ayyub bin al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, says, If any one of you goes to an open space for answering the call of nature, he should neither face nor turn his back towards the Qibla. He should either face the east or the west.